A painful reality in Western society is that no one prepares you for how lonely adulthood can be. As children, we have our clan, the lifelong friends and classmates we met along the way, and our families who support us through and through. Even if you didn't grow up in the warmth of friends and family, at least you knew that things would change when you become an adult. If you downloaded the college DLC, that blend of adult independence and childhood coddling lasted a little longer. For the first and probably last time in your life, you are entirely your own person. And if you choose to play life on PvP mode, your single track mission keeps you oriented, and a robust support network stops you from falling through the cracks, should you only reach out for help. But the day eventually comes when you're no longer under your family's protective wing, or surrounded by peers who want to see you succeed. In all likelihood, one day you will wake up hungover in a studio apartment, scrolling Instagram with zero bitches in your DMs. And in that stage of life, you will be fragile. This is adulthood for the screen generation. Our man Life on My Terms, or Lomp, is no stranger to this dystopian reality of our own design. Let us explore his fascinating story, and how only after being cleansed of his entire net worth and being rendered insolvent has he found inner peace. Our homie describes himself as a man in his mid-30s, of unspecified East Asian descent, but previously lived in Taiwan and immigrated to the US at age 11. Throughout his life, Lomp checked all the blocks. He was educated, well-traveled, diligent in his craft, and adequately compensated for his work as a software engineer in San Francisco and later New York City. He was focused on finance and investments, and his trajectory indicated all systems go. But under this delicate facade of successful yuppie tech bro, the man was a mess. He described crippling loneliness as the only member of his family still outside the Orient. He had alienated all of his friends by prioritizing his pursuit of professional development, and thus he spent his nights smoking skunkweed alone in his apartment, joined occasionally by his roommates, who saw him only as a rent contributor and a source of free ganja. Lump's self-alienation from IRL friends pushed him deep into social media trends. Our unfortunate homie got hooked on so-called self-help Instagram and YouTube channels that promised increased productivity and self-worth to those who followed social media influencer life habits like yoga, kale smoothies, and manifesting. This whole issue was deeply exacerbated in that New York City was on heavy COVID lockdown and even getting out of your apartment for reasons other than foraging or medical attention brought risk of the banhammer and minus 100 social credit score. What's worse, our man was unable to get laid on dating apps. He was frustrated that he couldn't find any real women on Tinder or Bumble. After months of getting ghosted, and I think he might have even been catfished, Lomp decided he could not go on like this. It was time to take back the driver's seat in his life and he needed the funding to do so. It was time to score sick gains. He began by tallying his net worth at approximately $300,000, spread among various savings accounts and low-risk investments. That's a respectable sum in most of the country, but barely middle class in the Big Apple. While Lump's holdings in VT Sachs would have made his grandfather proud, a true baller, needs much more cheese. During the COVID lockdown, when the market was inexplicably yeeting itself to the freaking moon, our social media addicted friend knew exactly where to turn for financial advice. Reddit and YouTube, the ideal information hubs for honest, actionable fiscal planning. As all of us will recall, the high growth tech stock craze was in full bloom during this time. Finfluencers and literally everyone else on the planet was talking about which cash flow negative company would turn them into millionaires by the end of the year. But our revivalist friend was a cut above the rest, and determined that Elon Musk's Tesla was his golden ticket. At least it had revenue, unlike some other companies in Kathy Wood's ETFs. Lump cracked open the interweb and turned his mutual fund holdings into cold, hard cash, in spite of any protest from boomer financial planners. In short order, our man dumped all $300,000 into shares of Tesla. Although Lump doesn't share his buy price, my MI6 tier retrospective analysis of his later comments indicate he bought $300,000 worth of shares at a split adjusted price of approximately $80 each in July of 2020. This would equate to approximately 3,750 split adjusted shares. The thought of getting your hands on 300k of Tesla shares in the summer of 2020 should have you salivating. Lomp picked the ideal time to YOLO into growth stonk, and over the next year and change, the big shot diamond handed through explosive growth and stock splits as he watched his net worth go absolutely flying. Lomp set his target portfolio value at 1.5 million. If he could reach that, he would cash out. Usually setting an arbitrary net worth goal like that is a suicide mission. It rarely works out, but just this once, our man did indeed hit that number in November of 2021, liquidating his shares of Elon and going all cash. With legendary timing, our man was really, really close to selling the exact top. This perfect exit timing and his 5x net worth in a little over a year gave Lomp the confidence of Conor McGregor. With his new millionaire strut, 
The big man was feeling on top of the world for the first time in his life. Thinking he was infallible, Lump slapped down his resignation letter on his boss's desk, stole everything except the purple Jolly Ranchers from the office candy dish, and walked into the Central Park sunset with a pack of Fun Dip and a new outlook on life. He made it, or so he thought. As it turns out, even a million and a half doesn't go that far when you have no income behind it. And when your entire unfulfilling life is work and social media, having cash in the bank doesn't really do anything to change that. And worse, this was November of 2021. Lomp's YouTube and TikTok addiction meant he was bombarded hourly by finfluencers shilling shitcoins with imminent patent approval for both military and civilian applications that were sure to 10x overnight. And sometimes they did, at least briefly. Remember Dogebank? And Lomp fell into the trap of believing he could be part of that gain. At the height of the shitcoin boom, our man decided to get back in the trading game. With just enough cash set aside for expenses, Lomp took the majority of his Tesla gains and dumped it into various cryptocurrencies. At a time when Bitcoin was cresting $60,000, trading real money for fake money to try to get more real money looked like a sure bet. But November 2021 was pretty much the top for the shitcoin boom. Just as garbage coins like Einsteinium, Salt, and Sia coin all collapsed in 2018, here we were three years later with a new generation of hype bubble darlings collapsing before our eyes. Lomt had no success with the dog-themed cryptos. Even the quote, blue-chip cryptocurrencies were struggling. By early summer, he had already pissed away 60% on crypto and spent a bunch of money on his 2021 capital gains tax. His net worth was down to about 400 grand. He was now up $100,000 from his starting point two years ago. That's less than half of his post-tax salary if he had just stayed at work during that time. Lomt was not ready to throw in the towel and get back on the noon to 3 p.m. grind. Instead, he just determined to take a more conservative trading strategy. But it's here that we see Lomt's pride truly interfere with his intelligence. With $400,000, Lomt determined that staking stablecoins was a promising way to earn interest on his balance. FTX would offer 6.5% interest on US dollar coin up to $100,000, resulting in $6,500 annual revenue, which is approximately two weeks salary when he was working. But this little trickle of cash was a nice reversal from his dwindling worth, and keeping all $400,000 in stable coins also meant no risk of loss. A respectable sum earning interest while he spent months taking a break from trading and going through extensive meditation to plan his next investment. His intention to divest from crypto was indeed the right move, but it came too little too late. FTX was doomed to fail. As a crypto enthusiast with almost 100% of his life savings in a single centralized exchange, you'd expect Lomp to be keen to any changes in FTX's stature, but his unwillingness to read the writing on the wall, indeed his own vanity, prevented him from pulling his assets when FTX's foundation began to crack. Scam bank run fraud's constant reassurance that things were under control possibly led to Lomp's decision to diamond hand. Lomp himself stated that he expected some level of deception by SBF, but wasn't aware of how egregious the billionaire's greed really was. A classic blunder. You should never underestimate the greed of billionaires. Instead, our man allowed himself to be dragged into the Ponzi scheme's collapse, and now SBF and his weasel slam piece enjoy Lomp's hard-earned money. The reality that there really was no coming back from this hit Lomp like a ton of bricks. The loop closing on his cognitive dissonance was traumatic, and he realized his funds were permanently gone. The once confident millionaire was down to $10,000 in his bank account. His entire net worth was less than the cost of fuel when SBF flew a decoy flight to South America. The big man cried, literally cried, when he recognized the full gravity of the deceit he suffered. These were indeed dark days for Lomp in the middle of November. But if he is to be believed, he discovered a silver lining that switched his life for the better. The financial devastation Lomp suffered compelled him to return to the methods of reflection he learned in Taiwan, specifically Taiwanese meditation and a Japanese philosophy of self-worth called Ikigai. Following weeks of seclusion in the hyperbolic time chamber, Lomp emerged with a new outlook. He came to one key realization, that each of us are responsible for our own life and our own happiness. And if one's life is dedicated only to labor, he will be unfulfilled. Money is an illusion. This is obviously Major Cope. If that's how he felt, he could have come to this conclusion before losing all his money to FTX. But this epiphany inspired Lomp to perform a hard reset. 
it was time to live on his own terms. He put down his bowl of kush forever and recommitted to a slightly hippie lifestyle minus the drugs. Usually people go from hippie to yuppie, but Lompt flipped the script. And I say this truthfully, I think he actually can be happier without the money, as revealed in his digital memoirs. Lompt redoubled his efforts in his blog under the pen name Brian Liu, or that could be his real name for all I know. You'll find a link to it in the description. In his blog, our philosophical friend describes golden handcuffs. He was a successful software engineer on the surface, but his lavish salary and short hours ironically left him bound to his craft. This created a loop in which the handcuffed laborer had money but no way to spend it, or he achieved no satisfaction when he did. Lompt recalls the days when he traveled on budget airlines and slept in unsafe hostels, but was unbound by the burdens of our work-oriented society. Maybe you just think this is copium, but I look at this as a $1.5 million lesson that was worth the cost. If you really are a character who rejects the stresses of the modern age, then you should break the chain and live liberated. As long as you're single, don't do your kids like that. Lompt, I wish you could have had this epiphany before losing one and a half million, but I'm glad your soul searching was fruitful. I hope you get the most out of your last 10k before the expenses of life inevitably pull you back into the workforce. And whether you succeed or fail, you're invited to the next Theta Gang meetup in DC.